but good evening. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the mini concert series with a parody of the opera. And we are going to go through the entire history of opera. Page by page, composer by composer, note by note. Oh. Lose the attitude. Lose this. That's what contacts are for. <laughs> yes, we're going to go through a little bit of history of opera, but we are not going to go page by page, composer by composer, or anything else. I realized with the last mini concert that I needed to go into the parody faster because most of you don't know what's in the middle. Today, I'm going to sing three arias. So don't skip to the end because I don't want you to miss what's in the middle. Today, we are going to talk about Puccini again. We are now at the beginning of the 20th century and Puccini is about to undertake his most ambitious and his last opera, Turandot, which takes place in China. Puccini hears this the first time as a playwright. He falls in love with, with everything about it. It is 1920 at this time. It took him four years to complete it. And part of it is because Puccini got cancer. Puccini got sick. Fortunately, it was almost completed. Another composer, Franco Alfano, finished it. And oh my gosh, we have a beautiful work that puts an end to an era. Puccini brings opera to a summit. The best known operas are by Puccini and... The most beautiful aria was written by Puccini. And it belongs to this opera. Who hasn't heard and fallen in love with Nessun Dorma. You might say that you don't like opera, but if you hear Nessun Dorma, oh, you do like opera. At least that aria in particular. With no further ado, we are going to start with Turandot. <sighs> Who or what is Turandot? And, oh, okay, first of all, why did I undertake such a task? Hi, <laughs> guys. I was thinking about presenting you an opera that was, uh, let's say, easier for me to explain. Uh, but in talking to my dear friend, Gabriel Velasco, well, he said, Why don't you do Turandot? And I'm like, are you crazy? Turandot is super complicated. And then he said, yes, but it has riddles, and it has love, and it has death, and it has blood, and it has passion and i'm like okay done this is dedicated to my my dear dear friend gabriel velasco <laughs> this is this is because of you turandot is an evil princess and she has announced that she's going to marry only the one that can answer the three riddles that she's going to present and they, and they, they fail, fail to answer, answer only one, one enigma, enigma. <laughs> Sure enough, in the public square, there were several heads like these that were displayed for people to see how evil this lady was. Even her father was like, you need to get married. You need to get out of here. But she believed that she was sacred. She was not going to marry anybody if they didn't answer the enigma. And she was kind of sure that nobody was going to be able to do that. Among all this crowd, there was this unknown and exiled prince. Supposedly... Super hot. Super handsome. Super smart. And when he sees this, he gets very, very angry and he calls on Torandot and starts What's going on? They are literally losing their heads for this chick. This chick, the princess, who does she think she is? Barbara, Barbara Padilla? Padilla? I don't think so. Turandot! 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 Show yourself and I am going to show you a real man. 
You are going to wish you had me, baby. I am not going to end up like these dudes losing their heads. Show yourself. Look, when I was a prince, I had an army. Now, I have two armies. This army and this army. tell you later guys why I give Kalaf which is the name of the prince this treatment you'll figure this out Kalaf has an encounter with his father King Timur who used to be the ruler of a kingdom but he was conquered and exiled and now he's old and he's blind and, and he's tired and sick and the only person that remained with this old man was Liu, a slave girl that used to work at the palace, who was secretly in love with Kalaf. And he's obviously overjoyed to see his father, and then he sees Liu, and the encounter goes more or less like this. Is it possible? Signore! Signore! Is that you? It's me, Liu. And I've been taking care of your dad. Here's your dad. Do you recognize me? Oh. 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 Um. Were you a cheerleader? Uh. Or did you lose weight? You. You look. Uh. Thin. Here. No, no, signore. I am just a slave girl that has been taking care of your father ever since we all were exiled. And just because one day you smiled at me at the palace. I know. <laughs> it's not the first time I hear that I have a winning smile. Um, what was I talking about? Kalaf. Yeah, yeah, whatever. How to explain this? You know, guys, the first time I watched Turandot, of course I fell in love with Kalaf. Follow me here. Years go by, and I watched it more, and I studied it more. I actually sang Liu in Italy. And the more I thought about Kalaf, the more I realized who he really was. My portrayal of Kalaf is absolutely accurate. Just stay with me and you'll see. You'll see why I... I have a problem with Kalaf. So he is very mad with Turandot, right? He realized what she's doing with these poor guys. She's awful. She's evil. He's gonna show her how to behave in public. All of a sudden, the moment that everybody was waiting for arrives and the princess shows herself. Because you're ugly. <laughs> uh, imagine the reaction of Liu, poor Liu, that has been taking care of his father, and and now he falls in love with Turandot. I would like to believe that Liu's inner self really thought the following. <laughs> Listen 
dude is really high on something. This must be fake. She has Botox. Her room is a mess. She doesn't go to church. She can cook. She doesn't sing. I sing in tune. I can cook. I go to church. And I've been taking care of his father for all these years. That Liu is not based on me. <laughs> She's based on a much better person. She tells him, Lord, listen to me. It's been a long road. We're going to die in exile. And I am going to lose the shadow of a smile. And he is going to lose his son. I can't stand this anymore. Lord, have mercy. You would think that after this aria, this dude is going to come to his senses, but no, instead, he insists. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't cry, don't cry, baby. I don't like seeing women cry. If you really love me, you will take care of my dad. We'll be happily ever after. And we're going to be newlyweds, and well, I don't know if you know, but uh, I know. So well, we will need our space and I can't, I can't, I can't have you over all the time, so it will look very bad. So take him, take care of him. Wait, oh, she's calling me. I can hear her. My love, I'm coming. Wait for me, baby. Wait for me. He makes it to where the emperor and the princess are. And he says, no, I am gonna guess your riddles. Even the emperor tries to dissuade him because he's tired of seeing people being beheaded here and there. Oh my God. Uh, man, man, we should go now. I'm tired of cutting heads. This woman's crazy, she's a brat. Let her grow old and ugly and lonely. Listen, I don't like her. And she's my daughter. Just go. Just uh, leave us alone. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. 
Your Majesty. No worries. I'll do it. As a matter of fact, the only answer I can't find is who's better than me at riddles. That is a real enigma. Uh, uh, uh. This is someone's breath into a thought. Uh, let him do it. If they get married, unhappily ever after. <laughs> so. And it's the turn of Turandot to speak. And she starts telling him how she's sacred and how her ancestress Luo Ling lives inside her and how she's going to take revenge for an offense that a man did to her a thousand years ago. So hashtag me too, here we go. Listen stranger, I don't know you and you don't know me. Well, let me tell you something. A thousand years ago, my ancestress, Lo Wu Ling, started the hashtag Me Too movement because she had to marry a stranger just like you. And I am going to avenge her. No man will possess me ever because she lives in me. And now I am like a goddess, or better. What a guess? Whatever. Be my guest. I am going to give you three enigmas that you will have to guess. And you, you will give me one hint. In the gloomy night, an iridescent phantom flies. It spreads its wings and rises over infinite black humanity. Everyone invokes it. Everyone implores it. But the phantom disappears at dawn. To be reborn in the heart. And every night, it's born. But every day, it dies. <laughs> <laughs> Guess. Princess, uh, everybody knows that one. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, no. I told you. <laughs> no, that was an easy one. Ah, you'll tremble with the next one. It flickers like flame, and it is not flame. Sometimes it rages, it is feverish, impetuous, burning, but idleness changes it into languor. If you're defeated or lost, it grows cold. If you dream of winning, it flames, its voice is faint, but you listen, it gleams as bright as the sunset. on fire and from your fire is more frosty white and dark if she sets you free she makes you a slave if she accepts you as a slave she makes you king guess or give me your head Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, don't I look good in camera? 
Somebody needed to know it, but in reality is that he's a foreigner, he is a stranger in Peking, nobody knows him. She decrees that by morning she needs to have the name of that stranger or else everybody was going to die. Heads were going to start rolling. Uh, that of course that was her style. Kill them all. Kalaf is super confident and he sings this aria. He sings the reason why we all sopranos hate tenors. Period. Nessun Dorma. It is very accurate to assess that Nessun Dorma is the most beautiful piece of music ever written. The aria says nobody sleeps, nobody sleeps. Because you, beautiful princess, from your cold chambers, are going to see the dawn that is going to bring my silence, and that silence will make you mine. Galab does sing some lines that are pretty seductive. <laughs> it's good. He's a jerk. His dad is about to die. He's the wants to marry Turandot. There's something wrong with this dude. I'm not going to sing this aria. Not right now. But uh, let's see. Uh, after this aria, Turandot starts going about the city to find out the name. She's desperate. And somebody tells her, we saw that old man talking to him. And Liu realizes with horror that Timur is about to get tortured, to get the name of the stranger. And Kalaf doesn't do anything. Do you think Kalaf says, no, 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 don't worry about it? I'm not interested. Leave him alone. You, dad, let's go. You, slave girl, let's go. Let's get out of here. Nobody dies. Um, I don't want you anymore. Let's go. Bye. No, he insists. He, he's like quiet. He doesn't say anything. Oh, the one who says something is you. This is super important because she refers to the princess as tu. And tu in Italian is like first name basis kind of thing. You do not refer to the princess as hey you. No, your majesty, your grace, my lady. But you never. But what's about to happen? merits that. She confronts the princess and tells her, you are made of ice, but you are going to be melted by his love. Before the dawn, I'll close my eyes and you are going to love him. I am never going to see him again. Then she grabs the dagger from a guard and kills herself.
Context is extremely difficult. I always cry because I know I'm leaving behind this old man, and this old man starts looking for Liu, Liu, goodness, Liu, sweetness. It's a moment that I will never get over. And what does Kalaf do? Nothing. Nothing. He still wants to um to marry Miss Thing Turi. He yeah. approaches her and starts singing this aria that is super, super seductive. And then he kisses her. It is then when she melts in his arms and he reveals his name to her as proof of how much he trusts her beautiful heart. <laughs> I know, I know, but this is the way it goes. I'm not making it up. I wish I could different. The princess is about to reveal the name of Kalaf in front of the emperor and the empire. She tells him, I know his name and his name is love. And they embrace and the opera has a happy ending. The main characters are still alive. That's odd. Why am I dressed like a man? Oh, because I have a surprise for you. Uh, sopranos don't sing Nessun Dorma. <laughs> I don't have a parade of tenors to cast. In this case, well, I'm going to cast myself as Calaf. I am going to sing it myself. If you are watching this on Facebook, like my page, leave a comment, share, if you are watching me on YouTube, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and family. Thank you very much, guys. God bless you. Don't go anywhere.